This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, today's case is an intumescent lens in a middle-aged patient. The cortex is swollen and the clinical examination suggests that this variant does not have any pockets of fluid in between the cortex fibers but in fact the cortex fibers themselves are swollen suggesting of a cortex which is having a jelly-like consistency which can be challenging to decompress the bag and in such cases we have a high tendency of radial extension of the rexus. My plan is to perform a two-stage rexus and uh, I expect that the decompressing the bag is going to be a challenge which I'll be performing after the primary rexus. Under the cover of dispersive OVD, I begin my rexus. I use a second instrument to stabilize the globe and also control its movement. And I always prefer a forceps for performing rexus in such eyes. My aim is to create a small 3mm rexus. I'm predominantly using the tearing technique while performing the rexus. I'm avoiding complete folding of the capsule, which we typically do. I'm just keeping a very close watch on the edge and trying to tear it in a controlled manner with the direction of the pull being centripetal. Okay, I was quite successful in getting a small rexus and now is the time to decompress. Since the swollen cortex is jelly-like, I'm using thick bored 23G cannula to manually aspirate the cortex. I've connected this cannula to a 5ml syringe and I'll be aspirating manually. And every time the chamber shallows, viscoelastic is injected to form the chamber and aspiration is continued. It takes a few cycles of aspiration and refilling and once the anterior cortex is removed, I now need to remove the swollen cortex which is posterior to the nucleus which is not visible to us. And to achieve this, I am using passive irrigation technique wherein I am just using an irrigation cannula and I am tapping and nudging the nucleus on its edges so that the trapped cortex behind the nucleus is passively brought anteriorly and then flushed away. But there is one critical step while performing this technique. I always need to compress the floor of the main incision so that sudden raise in the pressure inside the chamber and in the bag is prevented. These corneal folds are indicative of that aspect. By keeping the floor pressed, we are keeping the incision open which prevents the pressure buildup in the antechamber and hence minimizes the risk of capsular block syndrome. So one needs to be mindful of this aspect while performing passive irrigation through a very small rexus. In a couple of minutes, most of the swollen cortex is irrigated out. Once the intercapsular tension is released, performing a second rexus is extremely easy. Using a micro scissors, a tangential cut is given and then using a forceps, a secondary larger rexus is created. Now is the time to FACO, which is ironically the easiest part in such cases. The nucleus is very soft and using very low power I perform vertical chop. And since the nucleus is soft, I don't have to bury deeply. Just hold it and then the nucleus spits quite easily. Since it's soft and small, I made only 4 pieces. And using judicious low energy, the fragments are consumed at the pupillary plane. The cortex is then aspirated out. And I'm using HPMC to form the bag. The lens is placed in it. I feel that the rexus is slightly smaller 
and again I'm using a micro scissors to uh, cut the capsule tangentially the flap is held with the forceps and the rexis is enlarged The viscoelastic behind and in front of the lens is removed, the ports are hydrated and that's it the case is done. So thank you for watching and hope this helps.